Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another video tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how you can get some awesome time-lapse video. I'm out here, the sun is going down and uh, I think I can uh, get something cool. Okay, so anytime you do a time-lapse video, there are a few things that you need to consider. One is your equipment, uh, the second is your scene and then the camera settings themselves and I'm gonna be going through all of those things in this video okay so the scene this is a very important anytime you shoot a time-lapse video because you need a lot of movement otherwise it's just gonna look very still and not a lot is gonna be going on so I find some good subjects uh, clouds obviously that always works you can get a sunset a sunrise that always looks good uh, you can go to a place where there's a lot of vehicles, so it could be a main road, get the cars going by, you can go to a place with a lot of people, uh, go outside of a high school, uh, just make sure if you do that, wear a big trench coat and wear some sunglasses and then follow the kids around. The second thing obviously is your equipment. I have my 600D on a tripod. You will also need an intervalometer, which is a device which you plug into your camera and then you can set intervals to take photographs. Now you may have noticed I actually don't have one of these devices and that's because I have custom firmware on my camera, uh, Magic Lantern firmware, which has a built-in intervalometer function. Um, it's only available on certain DSLRs, so if you can't get it, you will have to get yourself an actual intervalometer. Right, um, before we get to the section with the magic lantern and how we set up that intervalometer, you still need to set your actual settings. Uh, this is the aperture, um, the shutter speed, and uh, you also need to be in manual mode uh, because if you use any of the other modes and you're shooting, for example, a sunset, your camera will compensate for the light difference and your shot will look evenly lit all across and you may not want that you want it to follow what's actually happening so if it's getting lighter to darker you have to stay in manual okay so this section will now show you how to use magic lantern as your intervalometer it's actually very very simple you need to press the delete button to bring up the magic lantern interface and then go to the icon which says shoot and you navigate using these arrows right here so if we go to the shoot icon and then you can see right there the intervalometer is currently off we can go down and then click set to switch it on and by default you will get a five second interval to change that you need to hit the Q button and then this control here take a picture every five seconds you can use your arrows to increase that interval uh, but I find 5 seconds is a good um, interval most of the time, so I'm going to stick to that. And then uh, you hit Q again to go back. And then when that's done, all you need to do is to press your shutter button, and then it will start taking pictures automatically. And then now you just wait, go grab a donut. Okay, so once you have your photos taken, uh, you can pack up and uh, go home and then we'll take a look at how to import this to your computer. Okay, so we are back on the computer and you can see we have all of our images in this folder. I'm going to go into After Effects and import this. I'm just going to go to File, Import, and let's get one of these images and then just make sure JPEG sequence is ticked. And when you hit open, all of that will be imported as one image sequence. We're going to drag this into a comp and uh, let's do a couple of things here. First of all, we need to resize this uh, because right now it is too large. I'm going to set this to be 1920 by 1080. And uh, I'm also going to change the frame rate from 29 to 24 and I will hit okay maybe a little color correction I'm gonna go to effect color correction curves and then we're just gonna add a little bit of contrast and um, bring out those highlights a little more 
and uh, you can go ahead and add any more effects that you want but I'm gonna keep it simple and just leave it like this and then I can output this I'm gonna go to comp add to render queue and I'll be using a QuickTime format with an h264 codec with no limit on the quality and then I'll hit OK and OK again and then I can select an output folder and just like that you can actually render your time-lapse.